<clears throat> Today is Tuesday, August the 31st, uh, so tomorrow is the first day of September. Uh, we're expecting to have a lot of rain and some high winds today, so as a result of the hurricane that hit Louisiana, so let's be praying for those in Louisiana as they begin to recover and recuperate from that devastation there. Um, a couple of things I want to bring to your attention this morning, uh, some prayer requests that uh, that uh, our, our urgent prayer request, I want to ask you to continue to pray for Constantine. Uh, I think there was uh, just some hold up and change in his treatment. So be lifting them up and praying for them, Leah and Christina and Benny and Vadim, the kids, and pray for their whole household. This has been a long ordeal. It began in December with Constantine's cancer, so pray for them. Uh, secondly, I want to ask you to pray for Vanessa Neely. Uh, she's been diagnosed with breast cancer, and she's now gotten a pig put in, and she'll begin chemotherapy treatment this week. And so let's pray for Vanessa and keep her lifted up. And then lastly, uh, just sad to bring you the news that Donna Faust passed away yesterday afternoon, late yesterday afternoon, as a result of COVID. And so... Uh, boy, we're going to miss Donna. Donna is such a joy and love the Lord. Um, just really was a super lady. And so pray for Jay, her husband. I think Donna was the love of his life. I know she was. And um, for Morgan and uh, Shannon and little Ruby, her granddaughter, pray for them. And we're just mourning and heartbroken as a church body. And so I just lift these up, and I'm reminded that uh, when Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians, I believe it was, he said that though outwardly, outwardly we are wasting away, inwardly we're being renewed day by day. <clears throat> and so let's lift these needs up to you, uh, to the Lord, and, and just remember and keep in mind that well, eternity is God's perspective. It's not ours. Our perspective is this life that we know. And that which is beyond for the believer is what we really can only imagine and we can interpret what Scripture tells us that's going to be. But we do have a hope in knowing that Christ being the first fruits of the resurrection, the firstborn from the resurrection, we too will be raised from the dead into eternal life and that life is in the presence of Jesus and we are also comforted by the fact knowing that Donna is in the presence of the Lord right now and she's realizing the reality of her salvation and we have yet to realize the reality of our salvation the fullness of our salvation and in that sense she is more fulfilled today than we have ever been any day of our life and more fulfilled than any day that she would ever have in her life and so let's remember Jay and the and the kids as we as we pray that uh, this morning I've got a song that I want to do in closing that relates to the passage that we're going to look at this morning and it's a good passage to reflect on as we think of these different prayer needs and especially Donna's passing yesterday we pick up in chapter 4 of John with the story of the woman at the well. It's a passage that's very familiar to all of us, uh, but there were a couple of things that struck me this morning as I was praying through and meditating on the words of Jesus in this passage. And uh, I'll begin in verse 1 where John begins to write and uh, to record for us that Jesus had to go through Samaria. Um, he had to pass through that after the, the Pharisees had learned that, that he was baptizing more than John. For some reason, Jesus thought it necessary to, to get out of that area. Verse 1, now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John. And in parentheses, John says, although Jesus himself did not baptize, but only his disciples. He left Judea and he departed again for Galilee. He had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there, so Jesus, wearied as he was from journey, 
was sitting beside the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Now, this well was probably more of a, a cistern, a shallow well dug out where uh, those that would draw water would go down into that cistern and, and take the water out. And it was customary to sit there and uh, to be given water by the women that would be there at the well. And there was a woman from Samaria came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. And the Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask me for a drink, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And just a little historical background here. Samaritans were a mixed breed. Um, they, they were mixed Jewish and, um, uh, good night, my mind just goes blank. I want to say Babylonian Assyrians who had invaded the north. And the Jews intermarried with the Assyrians, and, and they, were, they were looked down upon by pure Jews. Uh, they were half-breeds. They had a different temple that they worshipped at. They rejected the God of Israel. And so the Jews had nothing to do with him. And she was shocked that Jesus, being a Jewish man in particular, would ask her for a drink. And then Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Now, this is the first time this phrase is used, living water. Different than just regular natural water. But if she had known who Jesus really was, the Messiah, the Son of God, God, the one who can save, she would have asked him for water and he would have given her living water. Keep that in mind. Verse 11, and the woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw water with and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself as did the sons of his livestock. And Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water, meaning the water from the well, will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. Underline that word, never. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And the woman said to him, Sir, Give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come to draw water again. Now we notice she didn't really quite get what Jesus was talking about, or there perhaps was a little sarcasm in her voice um, where she would be saying, hey, give me, give me some of that water so I don't have to come here and draw from this water. It was an arduous task to come and draw water from that cistern every day and to have to carry it back to the home, which was some distance away from where the well was located. And then Jesus turns the tables on her and he says in verse 16, go call your husband and come here. And the woman answered him, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, you are right in saying that I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one that you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. And the woman said to her, Sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. And we're going to end right there. Now, um, Jesus had already proclaimed to her, Look, if you, if you drink of this water that I can give you, you will never thirst again. And the water that I give you out of your inner being will flow rivers of living water. We know that, that we can really never be satisfied with enough water. One of the very first things I do when I get up in the morning is I have to go into the refrigerator and, and get a nice cold bottle of water. And it's almost as if I can't quench my thirst when I wake up in the morning. And it's something that my body needs. We all need plenty of water in order to sustain life. And Jesus says, though, that the water that I give to you will, will cause you to never thirst again. You'll never need any water. 
And then he says, go call your husband. And she says, I have no husband. And Jesus says, in fact, you're right. You've had five husbands. And she tries to turn the conversation away from the fact that she's had five husbands and uh, says, now not only did I recognize that you're a Jew, but now I recognize you're a prophet. Now here's the point of this part of the passage. Jesus recognized that this woman was living a life that she was trying to get some satisfaction out of life. And for her, in her instance, that satisfaction that she was trying to attain, she was looking for that through different husbands. Now, some like to scathe the woman and call her a whore and all kinds of things like that. That may be the case. But at the core, at the root of her going after different men was that there was something in her heart, that God void that we like to refer to it as. She was never satisfied. Regardless of what husband she had may have had, it didn't satisfy her. And can I say that, that every human being outside of having a relationship with Jesus Christ is longing for something to satisfy them. It may be things. It may be a new car every three years. It, it may be a new passion that they try to get into. It may be uh, all manners of things. It may be food. It may be some type of substance that they continue to long for only to realize that it doesn't satisfy. It even happens within Christian circles where uh, a, a believer might go after the next fad, might go after the next Bible study, might go after the next worship experience, might go after the next church because something in the one that they're in is not satisfying. Can I tell you this? That until we drink from the waters of Jesus, we will never be satisfied. There's nothing that can satisfy our lives. And as believers, we need to recognize that although we are born again and we have the Spirit of God residing in us, if we don't continually tap into that water, if you will, that living water of Jesus on a daily basis, we will look to satisfy that longing. And it can be a longing for things that are good. Bible studies are good. But if we're longing to try to thirst that quench through something other than the living Jesus, we will never be satisfied. Myself have fallen into that trap of thinking that it's just going to be the next Christian thing that satisfies me. And I've come to realize that outside of my daily time with Jesus, outside of my daily connecting with him, the living water, that there is nothing else that can ever satisfy. Jesus used this phrase a number of times in scripture, speaking of him being the water or that living water. In John chapter 6, verse 35, he said, I am the bread of life. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry. And no one who believes in me will ever be thirsty again. Not just a cognitive belief, but can I propose to you that our faith and our trust in Christ is a daily renewal of faith and trust in him? I'm not saying that we we're born again every day, but what I'm simply saying is that has to be a renewed day in and day out, that we recognize that all of our sustenance comes through our fellowship and our relationship through Jesus Christ. Church can't replace that. Fellowship can't with other believers can't replace that. Bible studies can't replace that. Now, we can find that, so don't misunderstand what I'm saying, but it's the person of Jesus that satisfies our longing. In John chapter 7, verse 37, on the last day, he records, uh, and most important day of the festival, Jesus stood up and he cried out, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. If you're thirsty this morning, come to Jesus and drink. You may have come to this devotional to drink. Listen, I can't give you living water. 
Only Jesus can give you living water that satisfies. We fast forward all the way to the end, the book of Revelation and John's Revelation, chapter 7, verse 16. Speaking of those who had come through the tribulation, had made it through, and now had been clothed in white linen, uh, it says that they will no longer hunger. They will no longer thirst. The sun no, will no longer strike them nor will any scorching heat. Revelation chapter, when, uh, Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. Both the Spirit and the bride say, Come, let anyone who hears say, Come. Let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life freely. Can I encourage you this morning to Come to Jesus. You may be watching and you've never entered into a personal relationship with Jesus. And you're longing for that which satisfies. The only thing that will satisfy is Jesus. You may be a believer this morning watching. And maybe you've known Jesus for 50 years. But you're trying to fill that with something else. Other than your personal time and relationship with Him. Come All who are thirsty, come and be filled. Come, come to the river, brothers and sisters, come and be filled. Come and be filled. By the power of the Holy Spirit and the enabling of the Holy Spirit, drink from the living water today. Find some time, find a place. Just get with Jesus. I pray that the Lord will give you an opportunity today to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart. And where we recognize that that seed has been planted that God will give us the wisdom and the discernment to be able to cultivate that seed of the gospel, the seed of the word of God that's been planted in somebody's heart. And if by God's grace, uh, we would be able to witness him, bring in one that is saved, that is unsaved and save them today and see a part of the reaping of the harvest. Pray and ask God to give you those opportunities. I want to encourage you to be a part of our corporate prayer this coming Wednesday night. And we will be continuing to meet in the music suite. And just by the way, we have installed a, an infrared 
system in the choir room or the music suite where the air is much cleaner than normal. And so we've gone to that expense and that precaution to put those in many places in the in the, our uh, in our church building. And so uh, come and be a part of corporate prayer this Wednesday night. I want to remind y'all that are in 1115 small groups. There are no 1115 small groups this coming weekend. It is Labor Day weekend. And continue to pray for the Faust family. Pray for the Petresca family. And pray for Vanessa. I love you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Have a great day. God bless you.